Our today's topic is aqueous humor and its production. Volum, the aqueous humor is a clear watery fluid filling the anterior chamber 0.25 milliliters and posterior chamber 0.06 milliliters of the eyeball. Functions of aqueous humor are, it maintains a proper intraocular pressure. It plays an important metabolic role by providing substrates and by removing metabolites from the avascular cornea and lens. It maintains optical transparency. It takes the place of lymph that is absent within the eyeball. Refractive index of aqueous humor is 1.336. Composition, constituents of normal aqueous humor are on. Water 99.9 .9 and solids 0.1% which include, proteins, colloid content. Because of blood aqueous barrier the protein content of aqueous humor, 5 to 16 mg percent, is much less than that of plasma, 6 to 7 gm percent. However, in inflammation of UVEA iridocyclitis, the blood aqueous barrier is broken and the protein content of aqueous is increased plasmoid aqueous. Amino acid constituent of aqueous humor is about 5 mg per kilogram water. Oxygen is present in aqueous in dissolved state. Note, thus, composition of aqueous is similar to plasma except that it has, high concentrations of ascorbate, pyruvate and lactate, and low concentration of protein, urea and glucose. Aqueous humor, anterior chamber versus posterior chamber. The composition of aqueous humor in anterior chamber differs from that of the aqueous humor in posterior chamber because of metabolic interchange. The main differences are, in posterior chamber aqueous is higher than in the anterior chamber. CL concentration in posterior chamber is lower than in the anterior chamber. Ascorbate concentration of posterior aqueous is slightly higher than that of anterior chamber aqueous. Production, aqueous humor is derived from plasma within the capillary network of ciliary processes. The normal aqueous production rate is 2.3 microliters per minute. The three mechanisms diffusion, ultrafiltration and secretion active transport play a part in its production at different levels. The steps involved in the process of production are summarized below, 1. Ultrafiltration, first of all, by ultrafiltration, most of the plasma substances pass out from the capillary wall, loose connective tissue and pigment epithelium of the ciliary processes. Thus, the plasma filtrate accumulates behind the non-pigment epithelium of ciliary processes. 2. Secretion, the tight junctions between the cells of the non-pigment epithelium create part of blood aqueous barrier. Certain substances are actively transported secreted, across this barrier into the posterior chamber. The active transport is brought about by Na plus K plus activated AT pace pump and carbonic anhydrase enzyme system. Substances that are actively transported include sodium, chlorides, potassium, ascorbic acid, amino acids and bicarbonates. 3. Diffusion, active transport of these substances across the non-pigmented ciliary epithelium results in an osmotic gradient leading to the movement of other plasma constituents into the posterior chamber by ultrafiltration and diffusion. Sodium is primarily responsible for the movement of water into the posterior chamber. Control of aqueous formation, the diurnal variation in intraocular pressure certainly indicates that some endogenous factors do influence the aqueous formation. The exact role of such factors is yet to be clearly understood. Vasopressin and adenyl cyclase have been described to affect aqueous formation by influencing active transport of sodium. Ultrafiltration and diffusion, the passive mechanisms of aqueous formation, are dependent on the level of blood pressure in the ciliary capillaries, the plasma osmotic pressure and the level of intraocular pressure. Drainage of aqueous humor, aqueous humor flows from the posterior chamber into the anterior chamber through the pupil against slight physiologic resistance. From the anterior chamber the aqueous is drained out by two routes, one. Trabecular conventional outflow, trabecular meshwork is the main outlet for aqueous from the anterior chamber. Approximately 90% of the total aqueous is drained out via this route. Free flow of aqueous occurs from trabecular meshwork up to inner wall of Schlem's canal which appears to provide some resistance to outflow. Mechanism of aqueous transport across inner wall of Schlem's canal. It is partially understood. Vacuolation theory is the most accepted view. 
According to it, transcellular spaces exist in the endothelial cells forming inner wall of Schlem's canal. These open as a system of vacuoles and pores, primarily in response to pressure, and transport the aqueous from the juxtacanalicular connective tissue to Schlem's canal. From Schlem's canal the aqueous is transported via 25 to 35 external collector channels into the episcleral veins by direct and indirect systems. A pressure gradient between intraocular pressure and intrascleral venous pressure, about 10 mm of Hg, is responsible for unidirectional flow of aqueous. 2. Uveoscleral unconventional outlow, it is responsible for about 10% of the total aqueous outflow. Aqueous passes across the ciliary body into the supracoroidal space and is drained by the venous circulation in the ciliary body, choroid and sclera.